Uh, my name is Peter Hall. I'm the uh, Krupp Foundation Professor of European Studies at Harvard, and it's uh, my great honor and uh, privilege to uh, welcome uh, His Excellency Matteo Renzi to Harvard and to the Minden Gunsberg uh, Center for European Studies. Uh, it's a, a great privilege to have him here. Uh, Harvard has among its ranks uh, some distinguished scholars of uh, Italian art and literature, politics and uh, economics. Uh, but Prime Minister Renzi is the first incumbent Prime Minister of Italy uh, ever to visit Harvard, and uh, we're very glad to have him here. We hope it's uh, a new step forward. And this is also a very special occasion for us because it's an opportunity to hear from one of the most exciting leaders on the European uh, continent. Uh, when elected in February 2014, as many of you will know, Prime Minister Renzi was the, the youngest Italian Prime Minister uh, since the Risorgimento. Uh, and as you all know, he's the leader of the center-left uh, Partito Democratico and was previously the celebrated mayor of Florence. He's already uh, made a variety of remarks about Pisa in the um, intervening period. Uh, um, all complimentary, I might add. And I want to say it's also a special pleasure to have um, uh, his wife, uh, Signora Landini, here today. Uh, we really welcome you very much to Harvard and hope that uh, uh, your very brief visit is nonetheless um, uh, a good one. Uh, so since taking office, Prime Minister Renzi has shaken up the Italian a political scene with ambitious plans for reform in uh, taxation, uh, the labor market, uh, the political system. Uh, and he's also assumed a leadership role in the European Union with clarion calls for uh, fiscal flexibility, a more robust uh, growth strategy, and more complete European solidarity in the face of the refugee crisis. So the Prime Minister will speak for about uh, 20 minutes, leaving about a half hour for uh, questions. Uh, we're very grateful to you for taking the time and uh, trouble uh, from a very busy schedule to come and uh, be with us. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, welcome to Harvard. Uh, we look forward to your remarks with great anticipation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank you. Thank you so much, dear Professor, because uh, your invitation for me is great honor. Uh, I'm the first, but I'm sure I'm not the last uh, prime minister uh, who visited the uh, incumbent. Uh, Harvard uh, this great place of the past, but at the same time, the great place for the future of uh, our time, uh, of uh, our uh, people. Um, I really, I'm really proud to, to, to be here in this moment because I think Universities around the world are the keys of the future. And so in every mission, institutional mission, I spent some time in uh, a dialogue with the students, with the researchers, with the professors, because I consider, an absolutely, I consider absolutely a priority to discuss about the future with you. This is particularly true in the uh, United States of America. This is particularly true in uh, Harvard. If you think, a lot of people believe uh, very important the political discussion in um, the, the, the day by day, the discussion day by day. I think we need a deep strategy for the future. And so we need a very important role of university. For me, so this is a great day, a great honor, address in one of the most prestigious universities and academic institutions. Harvard is the earth of the future of the world. It's not simply the earth of the future of the United States. Because if it's true, we need a different idea of the world. We need a different approach by students, by researchers, by professors. And particularly, this is true in Boston. Uh, Boston is one of the most important capital of a political world for a lot of reasons, for the presence of universities. Also because it is the home of one of the most uh, brilliant families and uh, experiences in the political 20th century in the United States around the world. When I visited the, the John Fitzgerald Kennedy Library 
three times in my life, every day, I, I found something of different, of inspiration. Because, because the Kennedy's uh, family, Kennedy was a student of this, John Kennedy was a student of this uh, uh, prestigious uh, university, Kennedy's family, Kennedy experience uh, give us also today an idea to combine together the day-by-day -day approach in the politics and uh, at the same time a vision and ideal and a strategy of long term, not only a day-by-day -day strategy. This is a particularly important for me when I was mayor, Florence and not Pisa, my dear professor, you know, we discussed and we joke about it. Uh, I decided uh, with my team to dedicate an ancient jail, the ancient jail in the earth of the city, to Bob Kennedy Foundation and to Bob Kennedy Ideals. Uh, you can imagine, this uh, jail was in the, in the heart of the city, in downtown Florence. Florence is a very little city, uh, but in uh, downtown the, there is this uh, ancient jail called Le Murate, and in this jail we open a place of freedom, for the freedom of information, of press, of dialogue, of blogger, exactly in the earth of the city, and the name is dedicated to, to Bob Kennedy with the su support of Bob Kennedy Foundation. So Boston is that also for us. But I think if we believe about our time, we are facing uh, tough times, very difficult times. Outside of this campus, outside of this beautiful city, on the other side of Atlantic, Europe was hit hard by an horrendous terrorist attack. The attack on Brussels was an attack to Europe. Europe as an idea. <coughs> Europe uh, is uh, the most incredible political project in the last century. Nobody realized a great project as European father because they give freedom and friendship to countries for centuries fought each other. And it's very important for the first time in the experience of Europe, European ideals permit us to live in prosperity, in peace, in security. But the idea of Europe is today a very difficult idea. And the terrorists understood very well this point. And they attacked our capital, Brussels, not only with, in the physical places, but in the ideal places. The attack of Brussels is an incredible attack to ideas of uh, Europe and unity of Europe, the project of Europe. Let me be very clear. Not only Europe is under attack, because if we think only about Europe, we are not correct with ourselves. A few days later, the attacks in Pakistan, remember to the world, the Christian religion, as well as the freedom of faith, are under siege. A little garden, a little park, with a lot of children killed in terrible way. But, the approach of terrorists, in my personal view, is an approach very strategic. They consider Europe in crisis. They eat places, location of normal life day by day. A theater in Paris, a restaurant, a stadium a church, a synagogue, a museum, not only in Europe, if you think about uh, Tunisian attacks, an hotel, a resort. The targets of those attacks are targets of day-by-day -day life. What is the point? For me, in my personal view, we are in crisis because for the first time, after a lot of period, without a vision and without a strategy, terrorists try to change our lives. They won't kill us in alternative. 
they try to force us to live in the terror. And for the first time, for my generation and the generation of my children, for the first time, tomorrow is a problem. Tomorrow is a threat, a menace. If you think about my grandfather, my grandfather was in the war against French people and Greek people. If you think about my father, my father knew the generation of my father knew for the first time the experience of peace of Europe. And, but, but both, my father and my grandfather, think future could uh, as a possibility, future as an optimistic way. My generation and the next generation are surrounded by fear. This is the point. We need a very strong reaction, political reaction. This is the role of politics today, and this is the role of Europe, finally. Preserve the great dream of, of the, the, the father of uh, ideal, European ideals, but at the same time, build a different strategy for the next generation. This is the point of Europe today. And I'm not happy about the quality of discussion. Because after the attacks, a lot of colleagues react with strong determination. OK, we must fight against enemies. Yes, it's correct. We must tax the terrorists in Syria, in all the countries, in the Middle East, in North Africa. It's correct. We have a lot of problems in Middle East, in Africa. Africa is a great challenge for the future, and we have a lot of problems in the presence of terrorists in uh, sub saharan Africa, but not only in Africa, in Afghanistan, in Pakistan. So it's correct. There is this problem. But this is not the only answer. If the only answer in front of this attack to European ideal is, OK, our answer is bombing in Syria or other sites, I think we lose the incredible quality of challenge. The challenge is different. Is create a political answer. Let me be very clear, my dear friends of Harvard University. The terrorists who killed people in Paris or in Brussels didn't come from Syria, or from uh, Libya, or from Tunisia, or from Afghanistan. They grew up in Europe. This is the point. And if the European politics don't understand the great problem of this element, this means we are without future. We must see the reality. The people who destroy our lives in uh, Paris on the Brussels grew up in the suburbs, in the banlieue of our cities. It's an European, the man who killed in terrible way in Syria, Jihadi John. He grew up in UK. It's an European, the man who organized the killer in Paris. It's an European, uh, the, 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 the uh, brothers who destroyed the life of uh, Charlie Hebdo newspaper in last January. It's an European, the team who destroyed airport in Brussels and uh, station near to European institutions. So what is the answer by Italian government? The first point I want to share with you and uh, with the students. I think the reaction by European institutions must be in both direction. First, an investment very important in cyber technology, in security, share information between uh, secret services and intelligence, give finally a European model of uh, defense system. This is very important. 
we need also a answer in this field. But at the same time, we need an incredible investment in a different way. The position of Italian government is that for every euro invested in security, we need an euro to invest in education. For every euro invest in police, we must invest one euro in the ur urbanistic model of cities in Europe. For every euro investing in cyber technology, we must invest one euro in theater, in sport, in museum, because it's exactly our culture, the target of terrorists. I know this position for the moment is not majority. But it's a very important position by Italian government. I hope my colleagues, my European colleagues, accept this approach. Because without this approach, we are not in condition to fight against the enemy. The enemy is not only abroad. The enemy is inside our cities, inside our borders. This is the first thing, uh, very important, uh, and I believe this is a very great point of discussion in the next months in the European uh, uh, debate. Because when 9-11, New York City was uh, hit by terrorists, was clear. This attack was a foreign attack against the United States, the country of freedom. Now the situation is different. We have a problem with our citizen, our education model, our urbanistic development. Just one consideration. In the newspaper, a friend of Salah, Salah is the guy, or oh, the killer, who destroyed, who belonged to the team uh, who participated and organized the attack in Paris in November 2015. One, of, one friend of, uh, of um, Salah, in an interview with uh, a newspaper, European newspaper, used a very terrible expression. He spoke about Molenbeek. Molenbeek is this quarter of uh, Brussels uh, in which Salah was uh, protected in the silence by the neighbors. So, after the... Um, good operation and uh, uh, when uh, Salah was uh, in jail, this friend of him told to the to journalist, ah, only you foreigners, you can imagine Salah could escape from Molenbeek. Because this is our city. Attention. The very particular expression is uh, only you foreigners. Who is the foreigners in our city? This is the point of, uh, for, the, for, for a good debate in sociology, in, the, in politics, uh, in uh, the relation between uh, international studies and day-by-day -day life uh, in, uh, in our continent. So, I believe absolutely important uh, to invest uh, a very public discussion about uh, this point. I'm sure you don't even think about death if you have uh, a place to go. You don't even think about uh, death if you have uh, a book to read, a movie to see. You don't think about death if you have a project, a goal, a perspective. You don't think about that if you still have curiosity, creativity. If you wait for the don't thinking that the new day will bring something to learn about, something new, new to discover, a future to navigate, you are a citizen. The risk in this time is lose our idea of citizenship. Become only number. We are citizens, not numbers. In the time of big data, we must be citizens. In the time in which uh, social media are very important, uh, 
it's time to be leader, not only follower. Second point, I think this is a moment in which government must show something a very concrete. If you think about the situation in Europe in this moment, you can see the last elections show in every country a problem for the government. Obviously, I'm really happy because I'm the last one to go to elections. So before me, there is a lot of colleagues uh, of the, the elections. But if you think Ireland, Spain, Portugal, Greece with three elections in 2015, Denmark, Poland, the problem for the government are very big. Why? My personal position is that for two reasons. First, because European leaders choose a wrong direction in economy. They decide to invest a lot in austerity, austerity, austerity. And they lost the opportunity to give hope to the new generation. If it's the dream for a country is austerity, 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 nobody could fall in love with the politics. But nobody could give answer, concrete answer, to the problems of the new generation. Let me be very clear. In some of our countries, the problem of populism is not created by terrorists. Not only by terrorists, but before, is created by the lack of employment by the crisis of economic model. And for this reason, I think the European approach of a fiscal compact, of um, treaties, was a mistake in the last five years. There is a problem in direction, in the political and fiscal direction in Europe. So, there is a second point. We need a system, institutional system, able to give power to winner in the elections. In, I know for American uh, citizens this is not very problematic because it's normal. <laughs> the winner wins. <laughs> and you think, oh, you are in Harvard, and the only thing you can uh, say is uh, the winner wins. Yes. Because in Europe is not this the, 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 the process. And I can speak because I am Italian. <laughs> and I am the leader, the prime minister of the government number 63 on 70 years. Don't smile, please. <laughs> the very strong decision of my government to invest in a reforms project is not simply because we show to European people, ah, the world is changed, but because we need stability and the possibility to give power after the elections. Because if the winner in the election is not able to change things, this is a very good assist for populists. Economic direction, and at the same time, a vitocracy. The power in the hands of the people who give the veto. And don't realize reforms, don't achieve the reforms. If you think about the situation, for example, in Spain, today we risk a new election after three months, the last elections. I don't know, obviously, if uh, the, the, the Mariano Rajoy or Pedro Sanchez, uh, other guys could create a government. Uh, good luck. I don't enter, obviously, in the Spain model. But I remember when I became prime minister. My friends and my team told me, OK, we must change electoral law in Italy. Yes, because Italy is exactly a symbol of this lack of uh, uh, stability in the past. And a lot of that. The, the, give me this message, please, Matteo. 
copy the Spanish system. Today, we show Spanish system with other systems around Europe is not able to ensure stability for the future. So these two points, economy and uh, institutional reforms, push up, and I, I go to conclusion, to Italian system. Just uh, some considered remarks about my country. First, Italy lost the opportunity to discuss about economic direction because uh, the discussion about fiscal compact and uh, economic strategy was in a terrible moment for Italy. Italy was in very hard times four years ago, three years ago, five years ago. And so we come back to the period of very great recession. From 2012 to 2014, we had three years of recession. But now, after the Jobs Act, the reform of labor market, I use uh, the same slogan and the same brand of Barack Obama. I asked the permission to President Obama. <laughs> he told me, don't worry, Matteo is op open source. Don't worry. <laughs> but the, we create a system more simple, also because uh, worst uh, was impossible uh, in Italy. So we give a simplification, and now the labor market is OK. And now the reduction of taxation is uh, began for the first time. And now we reduce the level of uh, political uh, impact in the economy. Just to make an example, 2013 direct for investments in Italy, 12 billion of euro. 2015, two years after, after the reforms, we changed 74 billion. 12, 74. It's a very great change. So we achieved the result of reforms in, uh, in uh, our side. Homework is OK. But now we are in condition to give our position to European colleagues. This approach of European economy is a terrible mistake for European citizens. It's good only for one, two, three countries. But also for that countries could be a problem in perspective. Because if Europe lost the role of more dynamic, economy, as in Lisboa project of 2000, this was uh, the, the, the goal, we are finished. First, Italy realized reforms and now is in condition to give a message of radical change in the economic direction. Second point, and I conclude, Italy finally invests in the structural reforms. I'm very glad because uh, next week, no, uh, in the, not next, in the, uh, in the next two weeks, uh, we conclude for the, sec for the sixth, sixth time the process of change of Senate. A constitutional reform very important. We reduce the power of region. We give more power to central state. But at the same time, the senators decide to cancel their role. It's the first time in a Western democracy and a part of parliament decide this to transform the power, to reduce the power. And in the future, this means we stop with the expression bicameralismo paritario, means uh, through chambers who make the same thing. And so this means a lot of problems in the time, in the uh, lawmaking. And this is a revolution for Italy. But I think also for the system. New electoral law with a very important uh, philosophy, the winner wins. So from the next election in 2018, finally, the winner 
will be able to make a government for five years with stability. And at the same time, the reduction of uh, role of politicians in the economy. Market, market, market. Not because market is the solution. Because I think we need values present in the market, but present in the community. But because in the past, the presence and the impact of political role in the economy was a terrible problem for Italian economy. Italian quality of job is incredible. We must finally open the mind, open the doors, and invest in a different vision of the future. So I think if we finally are able to change approach, to change approach and finally we invest in a different vision, my personal position is uh, will be able to maintain the legacy of our past. John Kennedy said, change is the law of life. And those who look only the past or the present are certain miss the future. For Italy, this is not easy. Because the past in my country is incredible, is wonderful. Everyone loves the past in Italy because it's beautiful, because it's important, because uh, it gives a lot of uh, message to ourselves today. But now it's time in Italy of a new generation who believe important also the future. We love our past but we belong to the future. And so for this reason, change is the law of life. Change in Europe, one euro for security and one euro in education. Change for Italy with the structural reform, change in the political and economy way in a moment in which we have a lot of dreams. The risk for my generation and the generation of my children is the dream become nightmare. I consider a priority for me and my team create the possibility and the opportunities for the new generation to live dream and not only nightmare. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We have a little bit of time for uh, questions, and uh, so I'll entertain some, and let me just ask you to identify yourself, uh, to keep your questions short so that we can have more than one, perhaps. And remember that a question ends with a question mark. Uh, so, Alberto Alessina. And there are microphones, yes, he's there. W wave your hand and... Uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Renzi, for uh, a wonderful speech. Uh, I have a question about austerity. Um, there, and I agree with you, we need more fle fiscal flexibility. But there are two types of fiscal flexibility. One, which implies an aggressive cut tax now with that gradual reduction of spending, because we can't have deficit forever. Or, another, or one, which implies more spending today and more taxes tomorrow to pay for it. Which one of fiscal flexibility do you prefer? And related to that, if in, if in your flexibility you also see some role for government spending, what would you cut, particularly if we want to spend one euro on security and one euro on uh, uh, education? Thank you. I introduce Alberto Alessina, a very important professor in... Uh, <laughs> I forgot to introduce myself. Alberto Alessina from the Economics Department. Professor of Harvard and... Uh, very brilliant uh, mind, uh, Italian mind. I, I give an answer. Yes, please. Well, uh, professor, you know, my, my personal position is, uh, is that uh, Italy's debt is too high, too, too much big. We, in this moment, uh, um, the, 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 the level of debt is 133%. For the first time in 2015, we stopped the growth. 
But the problem is the relation between GDP and debt. Because in the last three years, with the recession, the GDP was the, our first problem. With the government of Mario Monti, GDP in 2012 had minus 2.3%. With the government of Enrico Letta in 2013, the level of GDP was uh, minus 1.9. And the first year of my government, 0.4 minus. So if we have the GDP negative, it's impossible to reduce the debt. The growth is the priority. To give a possibility to growth, we must reduce, obviously, the, we must give, finally, a signal in the spending review. But also the spending review, it's a problem for the growth, because we reduce our expenditure of 25 billion euro in the last two years with my government. So we reduce the expenditure, but this for the GDP, it's one more problem. So the combination, I know Professor, I don't know if Professor Alizina appreciated this Keynesian approach, but I think we must combine together. Spending review, reduction of taxation for the first time in Italy, with a lot of intervention. I save yourself to at least this uh, uh, intervention. The first was uh, one, um, one hundred dollars, eighty eight euros for the people who stay under one hundred fifty um, one thousand fifty hundred euro every month. Because the quality of salary of the middle class is a great problem, I think not only in Italy. I think this is the most important problem in the debate in the United States in this moment. But this is a, a consideration I, I shared yesterday with. Uh, we ran Emmanuel about it uh, in uh, Chicago. And so, reduction of taxation, spending review, opening the mind and the doors to market in a lot of uh, fields, for example, and I absolutely agree with you in the public utilities, in the cities, in the government, in the local governments. But at the same time, we need something to push the growth. Public and private investments, public and also private. And at the same time, the possibility to choose some little fields in which Italy could Italy become a leader. Because we don't know. We are not a superpower in the military field. But we can be superpower in the healthcare and relation with innovation. We signed an agreement very important uh, with IBM just some uh, minutes ago. We dedicated to Expo site, Expo place, post-Expo place, to innovation and technologies in this direction. We can be leader in the cultural and uh, innovation technology. So I believe not increase taxation in Italy, also because it's impossible. <laughs> The people kill us, and I think the people uh, is cor <laughs> choose the correct way. In this it's impossible. Reduction of taxation is a priority. I'm a Democrat. I consider a priority for the left to reduce the gap of inequality, but I think it's impossible to increase the taxation today in Italy. So reduction of taxation, spending review, opening markets, but flexibility means respect to parameters of decided by Germany five years ago. Use intelligence to reduce the debt. Because if you reduce the debt in the level of fiscal compact, economy is died. Ah, OK. Operation is good, but the passion is dead. Now, we must give a very good reduction of debt but with intelligence, with the prudence, also because the debt in Italy is uh, sustainable with respect to all the countries. We must reduce. We must reduce. We must reduce. 
at the same time, we must encourage investment. A lot of just one uh, date, then we, we change because uh, with the economy, it, Italian economy, I destroy your day, I understand. But uh, just to make an example, uh, 2012, the level of uh, private saving in Italy are four times private, no, private, public, private, only private uh, savings. The level of banks, money, the money in the banks uh, in, in Italy. The public debt was uh, more or less 2,000 billion. The private savings in the banks, 4,000 billions, the double. The combination between public debt and private savings, it's impossible, obviously. But it's a symbol. Italian people have a lot of money. There is the fear of the future. There is the problem of confidence. Our government, with the stability, try to give confidence to the people to come back to invest in Italy. But to invest in Italy, we must invest without political powers in the economy, without the traditional friends of France in the economy system, open to the market and to the model of freedom, this possibility. So, I think our economic strategy is very complicated to explain to great professor as, uh, as you, because it's a combination. It's not a traditional right approach. It's not a traditional uh, Keynesian approach, uh, taxation and investment. I think we must reduce the taxation because the priority for the middle class in USA as in Italy and Europe, and at the same time, encourage a push public investment, private investment, to grow up the GDP, because without a growth of GDP, it's impossible to reduce the debt. Thank you very much. So, uh, in the front here, um, uh, Pietro Galeone. Uh, hang on for the microphone. And identify yourself and remember the question mark. Yes. Um, buongiorno, Presidente. Um, I'm Pietro Galeone. I'm one of the students uh, here at Harvard College. And you've talked about the Italian economy, and you said that you don't want to talk about that anymore. And at the same time, you talked about European values. But staying in the realm of economics, and this is something that um, Professor Hall will be uh, very familiar with, how do you, because if we talk continuously about about individual countries, certainly we are not shifting the scope out to the European level. So how can we address issues of solidarity, all the great European values that we talk about, without addressing the huge current account deficits that are in periphery countries versus huge current account surpluses in other countries that will keep Europe completely divided from an economic perspective up until we address these issues that also then include transfers and other things that make our um, economic union and monetary union handicapped? Thank you. Uh, this is a good question. Because uh, your question is um, about the future of Europe. I really, I really worried when in, 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 during a meeting in European Council some colleagues explain us the importance of walls for Europe after the crisis of refugees, of course. But I'm really worried because I think the sense of identity for my generation of Europe is the Berlin walls destroyed by the people who need freedom. Thinking 25 years after, some colleagues, not only one, some colleagues image the sense of identity of Europe in the construction of new walls really terrorized me. So your question is a big question because the sense of solidarity in face to refugees for me, was a surprise in 2015. Because in 2014, Italy was alone in this battle. When in Lampedusa, 2013, a lot of people died 
in front of coasts of Sicily. A lot of people cried, but nobody had passed. And when in April 2015, exactly one year ago, less than one year, because it's in 20 April, 22nd, I don't remember the date, the, 11 months ago, near to Libyan coasts, a lot of migrants died in the sea, more than 70, uh, 700 people. I remember only two countries asked a, a meeting, a extraordinary meeting of European Council, Malta and Italy. So in the last year, everything has changed. Why? Because this problem, the problem of solidarity and refugees uh, crisis, become an European problem in Germany, in Austria, in Sweden, in a lot of countries. My answer is that, first, to be and to maintain human being. This means we invest, the Italian government, 20 million, 20 million of euro to come back on the Mediterranean and uh, bring the ship under the sea to give a tomb to these people. It's uh, not a concrete thing because uh, they are died. But our culture, you know because I think you are Italian, and I think the culture of American people, and I think the culture of uh, every civilization, think it's important to give to the man and the woman died a place to stay forever. It's a value. It's a value in the uh, Homero, uh, in the, the, the Iliad, in the Odyssea, in the Eneide, in the art culture. And I invest money to give this right to these poor people. But at the same time, I ask to my colleagues, finally, if the decision of solidarity is only a strategy for the newspaper on for social media or for to, to give a post on Facebook or if it's really a different approach. It's, this is really a different uh, approach. We need absolutely a different vision about Africa. Africa in the last 10 years was in the hands of Chinese people. I think and I spoke about the economy obviously. But this is true. European people don't think about Africa. I show Italy. Italy is a bridge, natural bridge, in the relation between Europe and Africa. And I propose to my company, to the companies of Italian people, obviously, to invest in Africa. The strategy of energy for ENI now is not in the direction Russia West is the direction north-south, the direction of Africa. This is a radical change of our energetic politics, policy with uh, our government. But at the same time, we must help these people to create jobs in, uh, in uh, Africa, to give a strategy of innovation in uh, this continent. And this is the only way to show European leaders as able to give an answer not only in the short term, but in medium and long term. Obviously, this is possible only if we invest in an ideal. Because if the debate is only about the deficit, the level of deficit, I'm ready to discuss about deficit. I reduced the deficit in the last 10 years because for Italy, this year is the best deficit, is 2.5. 3%, the best in the last 10 years. France is over 4%, Spain is over 5%, UK is 5% of deficit. So we can discuss about parameters and deficit, but I think the real problem is not discuss about technical approach, is share a vision, share an ideal, and then concrete, uh, concrete this, this, this approach. Thank you. I think we've got time for maybe at least one more 
I'm Italian, I speak a lot. <laughs> no, no, uh, uh, there's time. I'm looking for a woman here, so woman. there's a woman on the edge there. Uh, you are not a woman, eh? you can change. You can go to Casablanca, but I think it's not a good idea. There is a woman. Mr. Renzi, I don't have a question really. I merely wanted to point out something. You spoke of the Bob Kennedy Center in Florence, Sale Murate. There is another very close connection between Harvard and Florence, and that is the Villa Itati, Absolutely. which is the Harvard University Center for Italian Renaissance Studies, postdoctoral research center, um, which was opened in 1961. Um, it's, I believe it's the only foreign property that Harvard owns on another continent, and we invite you to visit us next time you are in Florence. I love it, but nice. This is advertising for Harvard, and I appreciate it very much. <laughs> I, think, I think, really, Villa Itata is a wonderful place, one of the most incredible view of Florence. And uh, I don't speak about all the cooperation between Florence and the United States of America, because the first was Amerigo Vespucci. <laughs> Amerigo gave the name to America. It was a mistake, eh? because uh, you know, uh, but the name of America come from Amerigo. It's a good, good thing the name is Amerigo, because it's the name is Vespucci. <laughs> you can imagine United States of Vespucci, I think. <laughs> My dear Vespuccian people, I think is not good. So the first was absolutely, the first relation between Florence and the United States are Amerigo, but I'm really happy to give this, this uh, signal of attention to Harvard and Villa Itati. In general, we have a lot of uh, American universities in uh, Florence, and uh, I think this is very important for the high quality of uh, sense of citizens, citizenship in, in uh, my county, in my city, in my former city, former, unfortunately. We'll take one more for the, from the lady uh, in, on this side. Yes, yeah, right down here. Yes, wait for the microphone and, and please be very brief because um, uh, we have only Don't a five minutes Don't make advertising left. for pizza, eh? no. pizza, it's impossible to have a Villa Itatia pizza. Um, my name is Nadia DiCarlo, I'm a consigliere for the Comites, and you recently endorsed fellow Wellesley College alumni Hillary Clinton for office, and um, you also included a lot of women in your cabinet. I was wondering, because of your help and you started a ball rolling, Italy still suffers from a big gender gap and a wage gap, with half the women are not participating in the labor force. What are some measures Italy has taken to ameliorate this problem? It's a good question. Um, in the politics, I think uh, it's easier than in the rest. And uh, I choose a lot of women for a lot of uh, responsibilities in uh, my cabinet, but also in the companies. It's a woman, the president of ENI, the president of ENL, uh, the president of um, Poste, and CEO of a lot of companies, the direct technical uh, technicians, director of a lot of offices. So, ministers, managers, Technicians, good. The problem is the life, day by day. This is the problem of gender gap in Italy. First, in the mind and in the cultural debate, with a think tank, we prepare and we present uh, next month a book, a document, not a book, a paper, uh, who start from uh, an experience uh, and a book called uh, Maternity is a master. Because in the Italian mind, if you decide to have a, ch a child, in the mind, oh, this is the f end of my career. And this is a great cultural mistake. <coughs> Maternity is a master. At the same time, we must give concrete possibilities co-working, opportunities for the women, opportunities for the high-level school in the first year of life. So it's a cultural challenge in Italy in this direction. 
I'm the first who choose a lot of women for the cabinet. I choose a lot of women for the um, management, uh, for the uh, technical technicians. Uh, I present my advisor for diplomacy. She's uh, a woman who chose to dedicate a part of life to children for the first time in the very difficult uh, career of uh, ambassadors in, uh, in uh, Italy. But I discussed with my wife a lot of times, there is a problem. We can give not only the choice of single person, but create a climate, a context to encourage women. And in this direction, I'm very, I'm very frank with you. We have a great problem in Italy because we have two Italys. North Italy, the average of unemployment and women unemployment is at the same level of Germany, of North Europe. In the South, in the South Italy, the level is uh, similar to Greece to not good performance. So this is true for women, and this is true for economy. We com must combine together, double think, both think, the very important presence in the political uh, life, but at the same time, day by day uh, experience. And I use uh, your question also to give a special uh, uh, good luck uh, to Hillary Clinton, also if this is not very elegant uh, as Prime Minister, but I am also Secretary, leader of my party, so I speak as a leader of my party, a Democrat Party in Italy. Um, we follow your electoral campaign with great attention, <laughs> with great curiosity. And uh, we know there are, uh, uh, please, uh, <laughs> please experience different experiences uh, in a lot of countries, also in Italy, very special in the past. Uh, and obviously, we respect our best friend, United States of America, and uh, the people's decision because uh, the most important democracy around the world uh, is for us a model and uh, a very important point of reverence. At the same time, I think, as a secretary and the leader of the Democrat Party, Hillary Clinton is the most able for me to follow the dossier, to follow the strategies for the future. I'm more safe if I think in the White House, after the great experience of a great leader as Barack Obama, will be a man or woman, a woman, I prefer a woman this time, able to lead the free world in the correct direction. This is very important. Obviously, we will respect every result. This is uh, clear. We will host in G7 next time in uh, Italy, in May 2017, the President of the United States, elected by the people of the United States, if it will be a woman, I will be more happy. <laughs> Mr. Prime Minister, thank you very much for thank sharing you. your thoughts. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much for doing this. We appreciate it.